Balancing nuclear reactions is going to be the topic of this lesson. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below for where you can find those courses. Now, this lesson is part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the rest of this school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson or when I get to my next playlist, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so balancing nuclear reactions, and we've balanced reactions, we've balanced redox reactions, which really sucked, and now we're going to balance nuclear reactions, which is actually probably the easiest of any of them, FYI. And there's a couple places where you might be able to make an error and stuff like that, but they're not too bad. So in balancing a nuclear reaction, you have to keep in mind that we're only dealing with the nuclei, we're not dealing with electrons whatsoever, and so really just kind of following, you know, protons and neutrons and masses and stuff like this, although we're going to have some potential conversions between the two, but the big thing is this. You just need to make sure that the mass numbers are balanced on both sides of the reaction arrow and that the atomic numbers are balanced on both sides of the reaction arrow. So, and this is going to be really important. Now, one thing I want to make sure you don't get wrong though. So it turns out you're going to balance the mass numbers, but what you'll find out is that the mass is never really completely balanced. All these nuclear reactions that we're going to take a look at all release energy. So they, and, and oftentimes they release a ton of energy. So, and the reason they're doing that is because mass is converted into energy. And so what you'd find out for a nuclear reaction is that if you actually had exact masses, not just rounded to the nearest whole number, which is what a mass number is, but exact masses to several decimal places, you'd find out that your products always weigh a little bit less than your reactants because some mass has been converted into energy. And so even though we're going to balance the mass numbers here, just keep in mind the masses are never going to completely balance because some of that mass is lost and converted to energy. But we will balance these mass numbers. So, and that's how you're going to predict what these mystery particles are in these next couple of reactions is you're going to figure out what the mass number is and what the atomic number is in order to balance the mass number and the atomic number on both sides of that arrow. So if we look on the left hand side, the mass number is 238. So the total mass numbers are going to have to sum up to 238 on this side. Well, we've already got 234 here, which means that our mystery particle is going to have to have a mass number of 4. That way, 234 plus 4 adds up to 238. Similar with the atomic number, we've got a total atomic number of 92 on the left-hand side of the arrow. So on the other side, 90 plus what is going to add up to 92? Well, 90 plus 2. And so then you have to say, okay, well, what is this mystery particle? Well, in this case, you've got two different ways to write this, but keep in mind, this is an alpha particle. And you could have wrote it as HE for helium, so, or you could write it as alpha, and both are acceptable. We'll find out this is an example of what we call alpha decay, which we'll study in the next lesson, in which an alpha particle is emitted out of a nucleus, or ejected out of a nucleus. All right, so same, same fashion over here. So in this case, the mystery particle is on the reactant side instead of the product side, but again, it works exactly the same. We've got to balance the mass numbers on both sides and the atomic numbers on both sides. And so in this case, on the product side, the total mass number is 214. And so the question is 214 plus whatever here has to add up to 214. That must correspond to a mass number of zero. And then finally, 83 plus what gives a total of 82? Well, 83 plus negative 1. And 83 and negative 1 adds up to a total of 82, and there it is. And so the question is, who's got a mass number of 0 and an atomic number of negative 1? So, and that is a beta particle or electron. And we'll find out customarily it's going to be more commonly written. Let me get that plus sign out of there so it doesn't look like it's part of it. So what you'll find out is that when you've got it on the reactant side, it's more customarily going to be written as an electron, as this is what was referred to as an electron capture reaction, in which an actual electron is sucked into the nucleus and combined with the nucleus. Whereas the other one we're going to look at in the next lesson is called beta decay, where an, an electron actually gets ejected out of the nucleus. Well, the nucleus didn't have any electrons, so but one was created, so to speak, from a nuclear decay process. And in that case, we usually write it as beta, but you can kind of use them interchangeably. So when whether they wrote this as E for electron or beta, the lowercase beta symbol, uh, either way. But that is our mystery particle. So you're supposed to be able to figure out the uh, mass number and atomic number, and then from that figure out its identity. All right, got one more thing to do here. So in this last example, we're going to look at an example of what's called a nuclear transmutation, in which one nucleus is converted into another nucleus. 
So if you notice, that's the, uh, the whole premise of alchemy is they want to turn everything into gold. Well, and they never turned anything into gold. Uh, they didn't understand nuclear pro you know, decay processes, nor have the capability of doing them. So, but we do, and we actually can turn one nucleus into another nucleus. So and uh, when we uh, do this kind of artificially, we call this nuclear transmutation. And there is a special shorthand associated with this that you might be on the hook for. And the way this works, we'll kind of divide this up. So you, you got your reactant nucleus, your product nucleus. So, and then in the middle, oftentimes what's going to happen is you're going to bombard, there's going to be a collision between your reactant nucleus and some other particle, and it's going to yield your product nucleus plus some other particle. And in parentheses, they hear they have them separated by a comma, these two particles, the reactant one on the left and the product one on the right. And so you might look at this as, you know, right in the middle there where there's that comma, that's where you'd see the reaction arrow here. And so we can rewrite this here as oxygen 16, 8 plus P for proton, 1, 1, goes to our mystery particle we're trying to figure out, plus nitrogen, 13. And so once again, we got to balance the mass numbers and the atomic numbers. So 16 plus 1 is 17 on total on the reactant side. 13 plus 4 gives us 17 on the product side. And then 8 plus 1 is 9. 7 plus... 2 would also give us 9. And again, what is this mystery particle? Well, not the first time we've seen this one. 4 and 2, that is an alpha particle, but again, you could also write that as helium here. Although when you write it with nuclear transmutation shorthand, you have to use the lovely Greek symbol if it has one. And so you definitely have to put alpha in right here instead. And so if you're trying to figure out that mystery particle with the shorthand for nuclear transmutations, it would have been an alpha particle there. So you should understand how this uh, shorthand works for these nuclear transmutations. You should be able to translate it into an overall balanced nuclear reaction and you should be able to figure out, you know, what any one of these four might be given the other three. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, a like and a comment letting me know are pretty much the best things you can do to support the channel. And if you're looking for extra nuclear chemistry or general chemistry practice or final exam rapid reviews, you're prepping for finals, then take a look at my general chemistry master course it includes all of those things. A free trial is available. I'll leave a link in the description below. Happy studying.